How good is Tim Duncan truthfully? Tim Duncan has often been a hot topic for debate on social media or with fans of other teams, and usually it's one of those other fans making. Very few fans, even Spurs ones, would argue that Tim Duncan is the greatest player of all time. But many times, fans of opposing teams mistake that argument with a more common one. He's the greatest power forward of all time. In this video, let's zoom in at his career and see how good Tim Duncan truthfully is. Tim was a nationally ranked swimmer at St. Dunstan's Episcopal High School in the Virgin Islands before the island's only Olympic-sized pool was destroyed by Hurricane Hugo in 1989. From there, Tim Duncan switched his focus to basketball, although he did not begin playing organized basketball until the ninth grade. During his college career, Tim Duncan was a two-time ACC Player of the Year with the Wake Forest University Demon Deacons. Duncan was an All-American at Wake Forest, where he finished with honors in psychology. Duncan won the 1997 John Wooden Award as the NCAA's Best Overall Male Player based on the votes of sportscasters and news writers. In that season, Duncan averaged 20.8 points per game and 14.7 rebounds per game. Duncan finished his college career as the leading shot blocker in NCAA history and is one of only 10 players with more than 2,000 career points and 1,500 career rebounds. He was also the first player in NCAA history to reach 1,500 points and 1,000 rebounds. Right then, he was drafted with the first pick of the 1997 NBA Draft by the San Antonio Spurs and immediately made an impact, averaging 21.1 points per game in his first season. The Spurs were able to pick Duncan, the first senior to be selected first overall since Larry Johnson, due to the fact that they were coming off a 20-62 season due to a David Robinson injury. During the lockout-shortened 1999 NBA season, Duncan and David Robinson formed the Spurs Twin Towers and both led the Spurs to the franchise's first NBA Finals trophy by beating the New York Knicks in five games. In the 2001-2002 season, Duncan was named the league's most valuable player, joining teammate David Robinson as Spurs members who have earned the honor. After 2002-2003, Duncan was named MVP for the second season in a row. Duncan and his Spurs teammates made it to the NBA Finals once again, defeating the New Jersey Nets 88-77 in Game 6 to win the NBA Championship. Duncan was named Finals MVP and he and Robinson shared Sports Illustrated Magazine's 2003 Sportsman of the Year Award. His lifetime averages in points, blocks, assists, and rebounds are higher in the playoffs than in the regular season. In the last game of the 2003 NBA Finals, Duncan was two blocks away from a quadruple double, finishing with 21 points, 20 rebounds, 10 assists, and 8 blocks. In 2005, Duncan came up big in Game 7 of the Finals with 25 points and 11 rebounds to defeat the Detroit Pistons despite struggling from the free throw line in the fourth quarter. Duncan won his third NBA Finals MVP award, joining Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, Magic Johnson, LeBron James as the only players to win it three times. Duncan is famous for his graceful finesse on the court and for his low-key demeanor. Possessing a sound all-around game, he has been dubbed the big fundamental by fellow NBA player Shaquille O'Neal. He has also been called Groundhog Day by former basketball star and current NBA analyst for TNT Charles Barkley because of his ability to produce very consistently on a day-to-day -day basis. His signature offensive moves are his smooth footwork and his accurate bank shot. Duncan scored a career-high 53 points in an NBA game on December 26, 2001 in a home game against the Dallas Mavericks. He was also known as a part of the Twin Towers with David Robinson. The forward star ranked number 55 on Slam Magazine's Top 75 NBA Players of All Time in 2003, Top 8 Greatest Players in NBA History on ESPN list in 2020. Duncan played with the United States national team in the Championship of the Americas in Puerto Rico, helping them qualify for the 2000 Sydney Olympics. However, a knee injury forced him to stay out of the Olympic Games. Four years later, Duncan was a member of Dream Team 4, competing in basketball at the 2004 Summer Olympics. The team lost its right to the Dream Team nickname by losing three games on their way to a bronze medal. That record represented more losses in a single year than in the 68 previous years combined. It was also the first time since NBA professionals became eligible that the US men's basketball team returned home without gold medals. After their last game, Duncan provided a concise summary of his experience on the team. 
Duncan plays the power forward position and is also capable of playing center. As of 2006, Duncan is seen as one of the most complete, dominant, and consistent players of the NBA, as having been both nominated for both the All-NBA and All-Defensive teams in the last nine consecutive years and being a perennial NBA MVP and NBA Defensive Player of the Year award candidate. He ranks consistently as one of the top scorers, career average 22.1 points per game as of November 2006, top rebounders 12.1 with remarkable 3.2 offensive boards, and top shot blockers, 2.50. On offense, he regularly abuses opposing big men with his smooth footwork and his vast array of fake moves. He has a very complete offensive game, being seemingly able to score at will, both in the paint and from outside. His trademark off-the-glass bank shot is near unguardable. In addition to his impressive statistics, he has also gained a reputation of being a great passer and as a very good clutch player proven by the fact he won three NBA Finals MVP awards. He is the undisputed Spurs franchise player, but strikingly unselfish, letting other teammates dominate the game if they have a great day. Under his tutelage, players like Tony Parker, Bruce Bowen, and Manu Ginobili became legitimate NBA stars. Duncan is currently regarded as one of the rare players who could transform any NBA franchise into a title contender. Moreover, Duncan would have retired with six NBA championships, tying Bob Cousy, Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Scottie Pippen, and trailing just Robert Ory and those players from the Bill Russell Celtics era, which most modern Hoops fans don't really take into account when talking about the GOAT. In addition, the Big Fundamental scored 26,496 career points, 14th all-time, 15,091 rebounds, 6th all-time, and 3,020 blocks, 5th all-time. Duncan holds the record for most wins with one team, second most minutes played in the playoffs, most blocks in the playoffs, and second most playoff games. He's also the all-time leader in Spurs history in points, minutes, rebounds, blocks, games, field goals, among others. If Duncan had won in 2013, LeBron James would have been 1-4 in, in the finals, 3-7 now. Surely, it would have also had a great impact on his legacy. If it wasn't for Ray Allen's last second shot, Tim Duncan would be ranked amongst the all-time greats. Also, Tim averaged a team high 18.9 points, 21.1 rebounds, also a team high, 1.4 assists, 0.9 steals, and 1.4 blocks per game on 49% shooting. So it's pretty safe to assume that he'd be named Finals MVP if the Spurs had gotten the job done in that series. That would have meant that Tim Duncan would have tied Michael Jordan's record of 6-0 in the Finals. Also, he would have had four Finals MVPs under his belt, trailing only Jordan with six for the most all time. Make sure to keep posted with our videos to keep yourselves updated with your favorite star's whereabouts. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more.